Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Alex and this is Josh. Hi. And the past couple of weeks, we got to try out a new drone. It's called the Chroma Drone by Horizon Hobby. Okay, cool. So now you just want to hold down that button. Here we go. I'm nervous. There's a lot of drones uh, with this kind of functionality and in this price range that are on the market right now, uh, very few of which have the, uh, this feature that we were kind of curious about. It's yeah. called follow me mode. And uh, the Chroma drone has it. It's basically where you set the drone in the air a certain distance away from you and you flip a switch and you let go of the controls and you start walking and it follows you. Come on. Oh wait, is it going? It looks like it. Why is it moving? Run! <laughs> Kind of freaky, running back and forth. You just couldn't shake the thing wherever you went. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. It's actually yawing to keep the camera pointed on Josh. Let me tell you, Josh is fast. <laughs> Watch this, I'm faking out. Wonder if I charge it. Want to charge it? Yeah. <laughs> One key important thing is whenever you do follow me mode, you need to activate follow me before you arm it and take it off. The other thing too is you gotta switch it into smart mode. Mm -hmm. So you can fly it in normal mode around, but once you want follow me to initiate, you flip it up to smart. And I'm pretty sure you have to have it in smart mode before you power it on. Yeah. And then you also wanna be 16 feet, was it 16 feet away from 16 it? 16 feet away to arm it. You want it to point out the transmitter when you arm it. There's, there's a little bit of a, of a pattern you need to do. Yes, and once we got it figured out, it worked great. And because it's so beautiful right now, and this is a gimbaled platform, we took it out to Mays Valley yes. where they're having all sorts of crazy fall festivities. They got all kinds of cool stuff there. They got pumpkin chunking guns. They I'm got surprised a they didn't break dinosaur. And we also have a corn maze. Yes. And we thought that would be a perfect place to uh, test this follow me feature. Yep. Um, because we've seen it on a couple quads, but we've heard that there's been a lot of issues with it and we wanted to put it to the test. I know. The last time I was in a corn maze, everyone left me and I was scared. How's the shot look? <laughs> it looks really good. It's captured up here. So the function that we put it in was called tracking mode. Follow me mode will always keep the orientation the same. So say you're driving on the beach or walking on the beach and you want it to always point towards the beach. Follow me mode will keep it in that orientation and keep the beach in the background. But tracking mode is a little bit different. Tracking will actually always keep the camera pointed at the transmitter or you. They even have a really cool stick you can carry along that will hone in on the stick so that way you don't have to carry the big transmitter around. But that gives you the ability to change your altitude, mm -hmm. to bank all around you, and as you go up, the camera will point down, but you'll always be the focal point as it takes video. Yes, now speaking of uh, your, your altitude and then also panning left and right, one of the things that you gotta be careful with when you're fl flying in like a follow me mode or a tracking mode is you gotta watch out for obstacles yes. or changes in elevation. Because if you're walking up a giant hill and the, the quad's following you, eventually it's gonna hit that hill unless you may tell it to go up beforehand. So you still, you, it's not completely hands off, especially mm -hmm. if you're in a pretty crowded environment, um, but it does work really well. You just gotta watch out for obstacles. Also, your rudder is disabled. You only have your bank mm -hmm. and your uh, your pitch and your uh, altitude. Yeah, I believe it was on the right stick. If you use what would normally be your aileron, and you go left or right, it'll actually just do circles around you at the set distance that you mm -hmm. took off from. So we took off from 16 feet roughly, and it would pretty much keep that, and you go full right stick, and it would do right circles around you. And it did a pretty uh, surprisingly good job at keeping you in the frame, because it kept the gimbal. And even when you got more altitude, it would know to point the gimbal down to keep filming you, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And if you're further away from it, it would also make the quad move less because it knew that you're in the image. It would, when you're closer by, the quad would move more er erratically. 
Although it was a ton of fun, the corn maze was a little bit uneventful. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the corn was dead, so you could see where to go without using a drone. Um, so we decided we wanted to put this uh, this tracking mode feature to the test. Big test. And one nice thing about it is this thing boasts up to 30 minutes of flight time. Now, in colder weather, you're definitely going to get less. And also, if you fly it more aggressively, you're going to get less. But we have plenty of juice to strap it onto a Carbon Z cup. Did a pretty hefty tape job on this <laughs> I didn't want to lose transmitter. The poor carbon cub lost a little paint, but that's it all right. It still flies good. And it actually, uh, once you got in the air, it handled the weight quite well. Oh, yeah. We actually called tech support when you were talking to tech support. <laughs> you were describing the scenario without giving but, it away. But not what, telling them what I was doing. <laughs> what were you going to try to do? Uh, we were talking about, um, you know, say we have a four wheeler that's really fast and going up, you know, high hills up to, you know, 100 feet high or going down. You know, how would it handle that? And how fast could we go? When really we're looking at a Carbon Z Cub the whole time. Yeah, we're actually gonna be taping the transmitter onto yes. the top of the Cub so the quad chases the Cub. But before we took off, we thought it would probably be wise to give the Chroma Drone a little bit of altitude. Yes. Because remember, it doesn't go up and down on its own. And once the Cub goes up in the air, we don't have any control over it anymore because it's set. And we also wanted to set a little bit of height difference so that way it could catch up with it easier too. Yes. And give the camera a little bit more time to adjust back and forth. So yeah, we uh, set it up just in front of the CG. We put up the, uh, I think about 100 feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't sure if it was gonna work out, so we had Eric Monroe following us with his uh, Inspire. And uh, it was hysterical. Drone. You're gonna have to go lower, Josh. Wow, it's actually going pretty fast. Is it? And actually, when the Carbon Cub took off, it was kind of unique how the how the drone dealt with it, because it would yeah. actually it would actually cut corners. So if yeah. the plane was flying like this and it started to turn, it would kind of go into the middle and film the turn from the middle of the radius of the circle. Well, I honestly thought when I heard that the I heard a multi rotor overhead when we were flying past us, and I thought it was Eric. And then sure enough, as it passed us, I saw really quickly, it was the, the, the chroma. It was pretty hilarious <laughs> to watch because the, the chroma was like, wait, come back, no. <laughs> and uh, as we would go down, I think that was a sweet spot, was flying below it. Yes. Uh, as I'd fly level to it and everything, the chroma had to pitch quite aggressively and try to chase after it. So mm -hmm. it was a little bit harder for it to get on camera. Yes. So if I would have set up just even a little bit higher and made a point to fly lower, it probably would have been better. Yeah, and you also had to fly kind of like on the edge of a stall. Yes. Uh, because the Chroma, though, you can get it going pretty fast. I think the tech support guy said the fastest is like, what, 15 miles an hour? I think we were doing more like 25, but at the same time, it would uh, cut corners cut and corners, catch up yeah. with us real quick. We kind of lose it for a while, and then it, and it would, would come catch back. Up, yep. But 15 mile an hour, I think he said was a sweet spot. Yeah, and we actually just reviewed the footage, and yeah. I was actually surprised. It actually <laughs> did a pretty good job at following this thing. Kept it in the frame, I'd say, at least 80% of the time. Yes. Which is impressive for chasing a plane that's in the air. I think one thing's for sure. I think Eric and you, Alex, we're out and, of a job. Well, I don't know. I, I think we're safe for now because uh, carrying on a big heavy transmitter is a it's not ideal. Difficult. Not yeah. ideal. And uh, getting the shots. I don't think the Chrome is going to be flipping over airplanes like you do anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> but you know, honestly, I was amazed to see that kind of ingenuity. I wouldn't yeah. recommend anyone else trying this at all. Um, you're, you're putting a lot of money in the air and taking the risk, but we really wanted to try out Follow Me and push it to the limits. Yep. And for it to perform this well, and when we landed, the thing was sitting right above us, mm -hmm. happy as can be just like when it started. That's exceptional. Yeah, so definitely don't be taping your transmitter to any planes, but we do recommend trying Follow Me mode because it yes. is pretty cool. Um, if you know what you're doing, yep. um, it's a, definitely a really unique tool to go out and capture some amazing moments, whether it's with your family or friends. Um, it's an amazing platform yeah. for that. And one thing also is don't hesitate to call tech support. There's a number there for a reason. Call, they have a callback feature. Yep. That's the one we use while we were working on our planes and getting ready. We just use the callback feature. Sometimes there's things that leave you having questions or sometimes there's updates and things don't make sense. Rather than getting frustrated, call tech support, let them help you out and then get in the air and have some fun. We specifically wanted to uh, check out follow me and tracking because it's yes. something we've never experienced before. Um, but the Chroma Drone also has all the basic standard uh, GPS drone features, auto yep. level, GPS hold, altitude hold, yep. all that stuff. One thing we're looking forward to in the future is also trying out the wand. And yes. the nice thing, you know, maybe some flight test episodes, we'll be able to use that wand to capture some really great shots in the future. Yeah, so if you guys have any ideas on what we should do with this Chroma Drone next, you should let us know. All right, friends, we'll see you next time. See you guys.